Ladies and gentlemen, let's try game into the com video. For some time now, we've been wondering what the specifications of AMD's Polaris 10 lineup of graphics cards will be. Well, finally, we have some answers for you. This is also an article if you want a written version of this, which of course will be linked in the video's description. I quite like doing articles as well. I find it's kind of handy because then you've got a written list of uh, things you've spoken about before so you can just link it rather than keep needing to cover the same points over and over again don't you know anyway so as i said we've been wondering what the final specifications are for the polaris 10 lineup of cards for some time and finally we have some answers for you now the entry come uh, at Sysoft's sandra's benchmarking uh, website actually gives us some of the answers we've been waiting for so Polaris 10 will feature 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 slash 5X, we'll get into that in just a second, memory on a 256-bit memory bus and is packed with 2,304 4th generation GCN shaders. Now this, if you're not too familiar with the GCN architecture, this means that you're going to be looking at 36 compute units because you get 64 shaders per CU. The shocking thing, however, isn't necessarily the number of shaders, but the fact that the core is only running 800 megahertz. Now, that's not necessarily shocking in, in of or in and of itself. Excuse me, it's really late here. I've been working on the PlayStation 4.5, and then this dropped, and then I'm also trying to download Dark Souls 3. It's just been one of those days. Plus, I've worked um, pretty much all day as well. At well, my contract in London, so it's a bit late, so my brain is pretty much mush at this point. Anyway, so it's not really shocking the fact that the GPU core runs only 800 megahertz. This is not final retail silicon. This is basically en engineering sample. The shocking thing is that it's actually faster with these ridiculously conservative clock speeds than the R9 290X. And... This is even more shocking because 14 nm silicon can clock higher than 28. Therefore, even at very conser conservative estimates of say 1 gigahertz to 1.1 gigahertz, we shall be looking at quite the monster. And this is further compounded by not just crappy core speed, but memory. So you might recall that I just told you that it's GDDR5 and 5X, and I said I'd get back to it. Well, I will be, and that's now. So the memory configuration is listed at 6 gigabits per second, that's GBPS, and this offers a paltry 192 gigabytes per second. This is roughly what you'd expect on something like an R9 380X, something like that, and is half, roughly, to the lineups of other GPUs which would be considered the enthusiast products in AMD's lineup. For example, it would be the R9 290Xs, the R9 390Xs, or even the 390. Basically, you're looking at around half that bandwidth. What that means is this card is achieving faster performance than the 290 with a crippled core speed and memory that's basically got only one leg. That's insane. I'm sorry, but that is... That's bonkers. That's madness. That is Sparta personified. Now, what this means is that we know that the card is most likely going to be using 5X from just the leak and just from other tidbits of information. It will not be using HBM2. We know that pretty much for certainty by now. Now the benefits of 5 and 5X is that they are pretty easy to switch around. The memory controller is very similar, you don't need to rewire the entire GPU, and that combined with the fact that you get twice the bandwidth per pin, it requires only, um, I'm sorry, it requires less energy, and on top of all of that, they're actually not that much more expensive than regular GDDR5. You're looking at killer. This GPU of the same bus width could have, with pretty conservatively clocked um, memory, to be honest, have a 300 or 400 gigabytes per second of uh, bandwidth. Not too difficult. And you can imagine what that would happen if you're combining that with a fairly decent core clock. 
What's very interesting, however, is that we don't really have a point of comparison. There's only a guesswork on where this falls in the Polaris 10 lineup. Now, rather unintuitively, Polaris 10 is actually a faster GPU than Polaris 11. What this would also likely mean is that the Polaris 10 that we've been seeing running Hitman was actually an engineering sample. Therefore, once again a GDC, the Capsaicin event, it's most likely that this was an engineering sample locked to 1440p, 60fps, all settings at max, DirectX 12, and the GPU is ruffle stomping it, so assuming it's a very similar configuration, that makes it even more impressive. Raja Kodori at that very same conference had spoken multiple times about performance per dollar. But what does that mean in reality? Well, unfortunately, we just do not know. There's a possibility AMD may want to expand the gulf between the 390 or 390X equivalent or the 290 and the 290 and the 290x. Do you remember back in the 290 versus 290x debate? For a long time, the 290 was actually the better GPU. This was particularly true until AMD sorted out the fan profiles and third-party coolers were a thing for the Hawaii's. After that, it became less of a big deal. AMD may not want a repeat of that. On the other hand, they may just want to say, well, fuck it, we just want the best performance we can get because obviously they are going to be competing, I wouldn't say exactly at the same time as we don't know the exact release date of both GPUs, but we know that most likely Pascal and Polaris are going to be occupying shelf space against one another at very similar times, which means that obviously both companies want to come out swinging as hard as possible. So, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.